So I'm Pastor Megan Rohr, M-E-G-A-N, and that's R-O-H-R-E-R. As a third-year-old, I grew up in a different generation than many other gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender pastors. I grew up not knowing a closet. I grew up having faithful leaders like those who stand next to me. I knew that you could be a pastor. I grew up in South Dakota, where every memorable worship service I ever went to was led by a woman who everyone in the congregation believed was gay. I have no idea if it's true, and it frankly doesn't matter for my story, because what I learned in those pews is that you could be a woman, a lesbian, and just a pastor. That that rural congregation got over it and accepted her. But what she never was able to receive if she was gay was the knowledge that they loved her despite everything. My story is one that is one of hope. I recognize that we stand on this ground, which I call holy. You're sitting in the very place where St. Francis and First United were put on trial and expelled from the ELCA. This very same space today becomes the place where we, we wash that past with the waters of baptism, that we confess and we have forgiveness, that we move forward together as the kind of church that prays together because we are bigger than these issues. Our commitment to social justice, our coming together on malaria, our coming together to feed the poor is bigger than these issues. I witnessed that firsthand when a colleague of mine from South Dakota, from one of the groups well known for being opposed to my very ministry, prayed for me at church-wide assembly when this vote was happening. We both knew that we had worked for years and years, had staked our professions and our lives on the church coming one way or another in the vote, and yet we could pray together. And she could say, that the work that I do with the homeless here in San Francisco was the kind of ministry our church should be doing, even if she wasn't sure that I should be doing it. <laughs> I've had a rough journey coming out in South Dakota. I have known pastors and colleagues who during my time at Augustana tried to get rid of gay demons they believed that I had, who threw holy water on me to exercise me, and who did unthinkable things, and, and yet, even watching these colleagues be able to become pastors in the Lutheran Church never swayed me from the truth that I knew, that darkness can never overcome the light, even the tiniest flicker, which is what I think we've carried all of these years, and today we'll turn into this Easter fire that will start our service outside and will welcome us into this loving baptismal water that will reclaim and affirm my ministry as a pastor. I stand here not believing that today I become a pastor, but believing that today the church gets to receive me as a pastor. Knowing that today's service is about seven people on one level, but it's about every faithful person it's an invitation not just to today's historic service, but to join us in the pews every single Sunday, where not a single one of these pastors will care if you agree with us or if you think our families are appropriate. We'll serve you communion, we'll pray with you, we'll visit you in the hospital, and we hope that others will join us in a church that has the courage to do the ministry that is what we ought to do, and that's be together as a diverse people when we disagree and when we agree. The thing that I will remember most is the words that were proclaimed on April 27, 1980. The words that I am a beautiful child of God. And it's the time when in the, in the Lutheran Church I was proclaimed as one of the priesthood of all believers. Not knowing what would happen to that baby as it grew up, not knowing what kinds of choices or families I would make, and that is the promise and affirmation we reclaim today. So thank you for coming. Hello again.
again, my name is Amalia Botts. I'm the Executive Director of Extraordinary Lutheran Ministries. Extraordinary Lutheran Ministries is the group that credentials these seven and 39 other lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender pastors for ministry at a time that the ELCA would not do so. Today is one moment in a movement that includes stories of countless individuals, congregations, and organizations. This movement to welcome people of diverse sexualities and genders in the church includes acts of courage, acts of faith, and acts of justice. Multitudes of people have contributed to this remarkable, this painful, this life-changing journey. There are a few people I'd like to recognize for their specific contributions. I want to recognize the Reverend Jim DeLang and the Reverend John Frickman. Reverend John Frickman was the pastor of First United Lutheran Church, the congregation that issued a call to Jeff Johnson. Reverend Jim DeLang was the pastor of St. Francis Lutheran Church, the congregation that issued a call to Ruth Frost and Phyllis Zilhart. The actions of these congregations and the leadership of these two pastors began this journey to justice for LGBT pastors. I'd like to recognize Emily Eastwood. Emily is the executive director of Lutheran is the executive director of Lutheran's Concern North America, the vast network of LGBT-friendly reconciling in Christ congregations and the legislative organizing of Lutheran's Concern were the catalyst for the votes last August that make today possible. I want to recognize Bishop Emeritus Paul Egerton. Yeah. Reverend Paul Egerton, a former Lutheran bishop, participated in the extraordinary ordination of Anita Hill. And I want to recognize Greg Egertson. Along with Jeff Johnson, Greg was one of the first Lutheran seminarians to come out as openly gay in the late 80s. Today is a new beginning. I have personally witnessed the transformative power of faith that comes from those on the margin of the church. Today we experience more fully that our narrow viewpoints cannot compete with the vastness of God's creation and vision. Increasingly, the Lutheran Church is made of diverse people reflecting the vastness of God's creation. And today is a first step in realizing that vastness. There is a door that is opening wider, but many in the world still wonder if they dare enter in. We are closer now to the day when all are indeed fully welcome in the Lutheran Church, in the pew and in the pulpit. There is a light of honor that shines today on these seven pastors standing next to me. It's an honor that they don't particularly want. <laughs> They believe that this is the light of Christ and hope that this is the light of Christ shining through them as a beacon to all others who stand on the margins of the church. 